Shalom, everyone. Satan, or Satan. What is the Jewish answer to Satan? Who is Satan? Is he what the Christians claim he is? The God of this earth? The God of this system of things as the Christian Bible claims? The answer is no. We're going to search the scriptures and we're going to discuss the matter of Satan and how Judaism as a whole rejects the concept of another counterforce that goes against Elohim himself. This is thoroughly pagan at its source. That's the real truth. If you look at all pagan cultures, no matter where you go, whether Egypt, Greco, Roman, whatever you want to go, you will see that the ancient world pagan cultures all had the concept of a good God and a bad God, or bad gods, good gods, evil versus good. This is completely pagan at its source. And I suggest, if you really want to see how deep this goes, you should do your own research on pagan deities. And you'll see all through the ancient world, there was so many different gods, whether good and evil, in all cultures. This is thoroughly pagan. This is not what the Hebrew Scriptures teaches. The Hebrew Scriptures teach very, very clearly that there is one Elohim who is the master and ruler over all force, over all things, good and evil. Elohim alone, Yehoah, is the master and controller of all forces. Angels do not have free will. In Tanakh, if you read the Hebrew Scriptures, anywhere you look, the angels are given orders to fulfill the decrees of Yehovah, Elohim. They do not have the right to create their own team or counter-offensive team against God. This is just complete nonsense, according to Tanakh. So, when looking through the Hebrew Scriptures you'll find passages where Elohim says himself that there is no other force besides him. For example, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, Yehovah, do all these things. Now, many Christian Bibles will mistranslate the word evil, ra, as disaster, or some other form, calamity. But that's not what it says. It says evil. Now, it doesn't mean that Elohim is evil. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that there is no other force besides him. Therefore, there's no contradiction in this whatsoever. The Torah tells you very specifically to stay away from magic, from raising up the dead spirits, from anything to do with the supernatural. Elohim does not deny that these forces are real at all. But he is in control of all these things. Therefore, if he gives the warning and you break that warning and choose to do superstitious things or magic or trying to wake up the dead, to speak to the dead, Elohim says very clearly these are real things. It's not fake. Yes, there are a lot of phony magicians. There are a lot of phony uh, people who claim to be speaking to the dead. The majority of them are phony. But he does exclaim that this is truly a real force. And he warns you to stay away from it. So if you choose to do it, then of course it is Elohim who will punish you. Elohim himself will punish you. By letting these forces enter your life, enter your home. This is a fact. He gave you the warning you chose not to follow. Now, if you turn and you center your life on Elohim, then none of these forces will ever consume your life or your home. This will all go away if you focus your life on Elohim and his Torah. That's the key. Now, the first example I'm going to show you that evil is not inherent. We were not born 
in evil, as Christianity teaches. This is not true. We were not born evil. Now, we have evil inclinations, which means, yes, everything that we have, our feelings, our emotions, are from Elohim. He created us to think, to have a sense of humor, to have anger, evil, good, all things are from the divine, from Elohim. We were made in his image. So therefore, if Elohim gets angry, he made us in his image. So we get angry. That's why we have those, you know, senses, awarenesses. We have uh, feelings, emotions that are from our creator. Now, the difference is, the big difference is, because I'm not trying to compare it to say that we are completely like Elohim. Elohim is all holy and he does not, like us, do anything out of evil, meaning he does not do anything unjust on purpose just to hurt people. This is not what I'm trying to tell you. We have a choice, free will, to choose whether to do good or evil, meaning, for example, if you're given an extra $20 bill, you're at Walmart or you're at any store and you get an extra $20 bill, you might say to yourself, well, Walmart makes billions of dollars. What is a $20 bill going to do? How are they going to miss $20? They're making billions of dollars. You can choose to do that. Take the $20 and go about your day. Not thinking about maybe this will cost this poor person their job. Or that Elohim says, you must not steal. It's easy to try to change the laws of Elohim and make it okay to do certain things because you think that they can compensate themselves for this. But this goes against Elohim's laws. So therefore, we have a choice of whether to steal or not to steal. Nobody forces you, unless they have a gun to your head, Regardless, you make a choice whether to say to the person, kill me, or yes, I'm going to do what you tell me to do because they have a gun to your head. Everything is a choice. Nobody forces anyone to commit murder. Nobody forces anyone to steal in a normal situation. That's what I mean. You have a choice. Your conscience deep within you, which Elohim gave us, he gave us the evil inclination and the good, and we get to choose. It's up here in our minds. We get to choose. Should I do this? Some people, they listen to their conscience, and they decide to do the right thing. Some people ignore their good conscience and follow the evil inclination and do what is wrong. So nobody can say that they don't have a choice. We all have a choice. And that what that is exactly what Satan or Satan, that's his job. According to the Hebrew scriptures, Satan in every situation is never, ever, ever doing anything on his own will. He must follow the decrees of Elohim. He is not allowed to create a, another team. He does not do anything of his own free will. Elohim gives him orders and he obeys those orders. That's what we find in the Hebrew scriptures. When it comes to us, we are not forced to following what Christianity teaches, that we are inherently evil. The Hebrew scripture speaks over and over and over about returning to Elohim, returning to Elohim, and he will return to us. For example, in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 3, Elohim says, return to me, declares Yehoah. And I shall return to you. It doesn't say anything about the cross. It doesn't say anything about the Messiah. It doesn't say anything about being inherently evil. That Satan is too much for you. This is thoroughly Christian based. And not in Tanakh at all. For example, Isaiah 45 verse 22 says, Turn to me all the ends of the earth. For I am Elohim and there is none else. I am Elohim, and there is none like me. Turning to Elohim is the key. 
Now, for example, I want to explain in a way that's more understandable. For example, when I was growing up, I watched the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. In the movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, there is a character named Slugsworth tempting the children to steal the everlasting gobstopper. For those of you who probably watched this movie, you know what I'm talking about. He goes to every child and whispers in their ear, I'm going to give you a fortune if you steal the gobstopper, the everlasting gobstopper, and give it to me so that I can create my own business and be rich myself. Now, every single one of those children were told the rules that they are not allowed to touch what he said not to touch. And every single one of the children failed and there were consequences. They suffered the consequences. Now, Charlie drank. He actually committed one of these errors by drinking some of the fizzy drink, as you probably remember, that he was not supposed to take. He survived the situation. Him and his grandfather were the last two surviving members. And they came to Willy Wonka. And they asked him, do we get the lifetime supply of chocolates? And that's when Willy Wonka tells them, no, you failed. You failed. You did exactly what I told you not to do. You took something that I gave you no permission to take. I told you specifically not to take or violate these rules, and you did. Good day, sir. Good day. So the grandfather, in great anger, says, come on, Charlie. Let's go give the everlasting gobstopper to Slugsworth. And what happens at the end? Charlie thinks he's got both his inclinations working, the good and the evil. And he turns around and places the everlasting gobstopper on the desk of Willy Wonka. And Willy Wonka stops him as he's walking away and says, Stop! You did it. You chose to do the right thing. He was searching for someone, a child, who would be honest and choose the right thing to take over his business. Now, if we compare this story to the Christian idea of Satan, they will take the character of Slugworth at face value and say Slugworth was an evil man, dead evil. He was evil, rotten. But what would the Jewish people say, us? We would say, well, if you watch the movie in context, you'll see that Slugworth actually worked for Willy Wonka. He was not a bad guy. He was hired, and his job was to tempt the children. You see what I'm saying? You see the connection here? He was hired to tempt the children to get them to fail in following the orders of Willy Wonka. So in the end, we find out that Slugworth was not a bad guy. His job was specifically to tempt the children to do the wrong thing and offer them fortune. Temptation, greed, but Charlie chose to do good. I use that example because it's something that I grew up with. It's a great movie too, but this is a, a great example of how you can take what somebody does, for example, Slugworth, you could say he's an evil, rotten scoundrel and leave the movie early and say, you know what, he was a rotten, mean person. Charlie won the day, but it still makes Slugworth a bad guy. And we, who study very carefully, will read the, or watch the entire story, the whole story being the entire Hebrew scriptures, Tanakh, and say, no, if you read or watch this story in context, Slugworth was not the bad guy. He was a good guy. And as you see in the end of the movie, Slugworth comes into view again and lets Charlie know that he did the right thing, that he was hired to do this special thing. 
So I use that as an example of what Satan really is here for. He is here to tempt us, to help us grow our spiritual muscles. Now, yes, it's not always, you know, flowers and candy when it comes to Satan and the things he tempts us with. We are tempted in many, many different ways. Like, for example, for men, if every woman was not attractive, it wouldn't be a big deal not to cheat on your wife. If every man was ugly or looked like a sack of potatoes, it wouldn't be a big deal and not so hard for a woman to cheat on her man. But in this world, we have temptations. We have beautiful people. We have beautiful places. We have money. We have all these things in this world to tempt us into doing the wrong thing. And the more we choose to do the right thing in whatever situation it is, we are winning against Satan. The word Satan first appears in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verse 22, when it says that Elohim sent a messenger or an angel. This is when Balaam was going to, to curse the Jewish people. He sent an angel, it says, as an adversary, in the Hebrew, the words are le satan, as a Satan against him. Now, the Christian Bibles and English translations will not render that as satan, especially the Christian Bibles, because this is a problem for their theology. God cannot make anyone a satan, because in Christian theology, God cannot be evil, or he cannot think in an evil way. But this is not what the Hebrew Scripture says. It's not saying, of course, again, that Elohim has wickedness. Of course not. No. But he is the controller and the master of all forces, good and evil. So if he chooses to do something or something destructive, he is the creator of all forces. There is no other force but him. And we see this painted throughout the scriptures, that there is no other force in creation that is a counter to him. He declares it so many times, painfully, that there is none else but him. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35. To you it was shown, Israel, that you may know that Yehovah is Elohim, there is none besides him. And then verse 39, so know therefore this day and consider in your hearts that Yehovah is Elohim both in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. There is none else. Now, the Christian Bible says that Satan or Satan is the ruler of the earth. But does the Hebrew scriptures declare that there's another ruler or that Satan rules the earth and God does not? The answer is no, it does not say that. It says the opposite. Only Elohim rules the earth, heavens and earth, only him. For example, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 60, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that Yehovah is Elohim, there is none besides him. No one else. It is him alone. Psalms 83, verse 18, that men may know that you, whose name is Yehovah, you alone are ruler over all the earth. There is no other ruler. He is the ruler of all the earth and the heavens above. Satan does not have free will. He follows the orders of Elohim. For example, in the book of Job, Job tells a story of Satan walking amongst the angels. He's one of the angels. He's walking in with the angels, the sons of God. Now, this term, sons of God, another thoroughly pagan concept in the Christian Bible about son of God. For example, Zeus, Hercules, son of God, born of a virgin. We can go on and on about this. This is a whole other subject. But yes, in the Hebrew scriptures, the angels are called sons of God. So is Israel, sons of God. So, Satan comes in among the angels and he has a conversation with Elohim. And it appears to be that Satan was going to and fro among the earth 
and basically causing trouble wherever he goes because that's his job. And Elohim says, have you noticed my servant Job? How faithful he is, how righteous he is. He is, he stands alone among all the earth. And Satan, you know, very sarcastically, you know, he's, he's an angel, observes all things. So, like, so of course he's, he's righteous and faithful. You bless the work of his hands. You bless his land. Look at all the property he has. All the blessings, the animals, the children. But touch his life, meaning curse his life. Take away the riches, the properties, the real estate, the animals. Take all that away and I promise you he will curse you to your face. And what does Elohim say? He says, go ahead, you may do this and this and this and nothing more. Only do not kill him. He doesn't say do whatever you want. Or Satan doesn't say, you know what, I'm going to go do this. And God says, wait, 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 wait. And he leaves anyways and does whatever he wants. No angel has any right to do anything without Yehovah. That's why whatever Yehovah declared to Satan in the book of Job, read it for yourself. In every instance where Satan returns with the sons of God to speak to Elohim, Elohim gives him his orders and he obeys them. He does not go against them. He does not have free will. And you'll see this many times. This concept of Satan being a ruler or a counterforce who took angels away from God and has his own separate team, the good team versus evil, this is thoroughly pagan. This is completely nonsensical in Tanakh. You will never find such a thing in Tanakh. It is not there. Christians will use passages that are out of context. This is nothing new. Um, it's not their fault at all because this is what they were taught to take passages out of context that have nothing to do with Elohim or Satan or any of this and use passages to make it appear as if these are speaking about Satan and the demons when it's not speaking about this subject whatsoever. So it's very important that we understand the concept of Satan by study. Thank you so much for coming to this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope you'll research this and study the Hebrew scriptures so that you may get a clear understanding that this is not something that the Hebrew scriptures teaches. Satan is there simply to help us to make the right choice and to build our spiritual muscles. If we conquer evil, our evil inclination, our yetzer hara, he in Hebrew, that means evil inclination. If we conquer, we will prove worthy of Elohim. It's an everyday battle. It is never easy and will never be easy. But if we conquer, we will win.